you've been around this since Doug got there. Um, what a difference a year makes, to say the least. So <laughs> yeah, give us a little insight. I mean, we know Doug from his time here, but you guys were coming off an epic train wreck, you know, the previous season. <laughs> how are things different and how much different are they right now? Yeah, well said. All right, we'll, we'll, look, we'll, we'll dip back into this, guys, in the NFL segment in a little bit. But right now, very excited to talk to our next guest. We, first time we've had him on the show uh, and does an excellent job covering the Jags yeah. for the Florida Times Union. Uh, check him out, jacksonville.com as well, and on Twitter also. It's Demetrius Harvey. Demetrius, welcome to the show, man. How you make it out? I'm doing all right. How about you guys? Demetrius, good. 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 I, 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 good. We'll, let's dip into the Eagles and the Jags in a second. But I, I, I know you were listening to the conversation, and obviously, mm. you know, you had an, your eyes on on the game last night as well. Just, what are your thoughts on, on the way that thing played out? Yeah, I mean, it, it was just, you know, first of all, it was scary to see. You know, any any time a player gets hurt like that, and they sort of go into that fencing pose, and uh, you you immediately know it's a concussion, and you're just hoping that he's going to be able to feel everything in his body. You know, we've seen guys like Ryan Chazier go out there and, mm-hmm. and now, you know, he's, he's having trouble walking and, and things of that nature. So uh, just to see that it, it, it was terrible. And, and I think I agree with you guys, you know, I don't know if he got concussed four days ago or five days ago now, but um, it definitely seemed like something else more than just a back um, was hurt with him during that game. And to go out there and play just four days later, it's just, it's just wild to me. Mm. Yeah, feels like a little malpractice there for sure. Uh, all right, Demetrius, so let's dip into this game. I, I guess let's start here, man. I mean, you know, you've been around this since Doug got there. Um, what a difference a year makes, to say the least. So <laughs> yeah, give us a little insight. I mean, we know Doug from his time here, but you guys were coming off an epic train wreck, you know, the previous <laughs> season. <laughs> how are things different and how much different are they right now? Yeah, that, that's probably putting it lightly. Um, Urban was just not the right coach last year, obviously, for a, a number of reasons. Uh, it was just very disorganized. It, it wasn't, you know, put together the toxic uh, work environment that many players have already come out and talked about. Um, but to flip it over to Doug, he, he's just clearly um, – you can tell that he's a real NFL coach, if that makes sense. You know, last year it just didn't <laughs> right. feel – it just didn't feel like it. I'll be honest. You know, that's so, a great way to put yeah, it. Up. That's in the nutshell. Not an NFL. Yeah, I'll yeah really. A college coach. You know, I think yeah. he's done coaching. Period. You know? uh, yeah. No, no he no, won't. No, he's not, he'll right. be hired coaching next year somewhere because they don't care. But anyway, that's a different. Well, God discussion. bless them. But yeah. um, just um, yeah. But you know, Doug has obviously brought in you know his mentality, very organized, very timely. Um, one of the things I do know is that you know the schedule is you know actually. A, a, a real schedule you know last year you know there were times that urban would leave early or do this and that change the schedule around um players were very disorganized this year it's very organized it's it's clearly um helped them in, in terms of improving how they feel about um winning football games you know last year it, it didn't seem like that was what the the news was it was more of um where where do they go from here you know they're they're losing but you know why um now it's about hey how how can they win a game and i think that that sort of shifted the mentality of the entire um the entire room and the entire coaching staff and players and and, and all of that so um thus far you know doug's done a great job you know obviously there's a lot of football to be played especially this game on sunday but um thus far it's been great demetrius one one second i mean i i Oh, I'm sorry, my fault, yeah. bro. Can you explain what you mean? Um, he would leave early. I knew Barrett was going to let that one go. I don't understand. What, do you, what, are you, what are you saying? I don't understand. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, uh, actually, actually, uh, before before Urban was fired, um, he he left the the facility early. Didn't tell anybody. Just just completely <laughs> left. I think it was like around five something. He left it up to the rest of the staff to sort of conduct the meetings. I mean, oh my god, uh, yeah. Oh so I, god. I don't know how many times that happened last year, but I, I can imagine if it, you know, that's the one that got out. I'm sure there's plenty more um, that that happened. And so yeah, it's just a, it was just a bizarre circumstance. He was straight that up is- had had every intention <laughs> of just stealing money for a year. I mean, that's yeah. all it was. He was a gangster. He he just came in there right, with, right. with a freaking I, mask on and stole money. I, anyway, I didn't okay. quite understand that. Like you, you said that to me, I didn't. I was like confused for a minute i i i'll just leave i'm i'm i'm, I'm the head coach i'm just oh, all right yeah we, we, we like steve spurrier was bad playing golf every once in a while this right. guy was just like yeah i'm out you guys figured out 
Yeah, yeah, he stayed after uh, in, in in Cincinnati and uh, didn't go back on the team plane. So yeah. that right there had me. Hey, he had, had to get he had to get his freak on, man. He, he wasn't lonely. He had, lonely. Yeah, he had hey. some companionship. Yeah, hey. at least. Hey, Demetrius, I got to ask you this: the mo between Doug Peters and the Jacksonville compared to Philadelphia is is like almost identical. He took a team that was at death's doorstep and turned it around in a hurry here to the point where he shocked the world and won a Super Bowl in the second year. Now, this is still a long journey for Jacksonville to go this season. But can you pinpoint – because I thought Jacksonville was still about a year away before they would be a serious contender, especially in a very mediocre division. What do you pinpoint as the most definitive reason as to why it's happening quicker than a lot of people anticipated this season for that team? Yeah, I, I think um, what, from what we've seen over the first three games of the season, you can tell that the players are bought in. I think that, that that's sort of half the battle. You know, this team is just really young. They obviously haven't won a lot in the last couple of years. They've only won four games the, the, in the two years combined. Mm-hmm. Um, so they didn't really know what winning looked like. But, you know, with speaking with the players in the locker room and just seeing how the new players that they brought in have sort of developed that culture around them, I think that that's sort of why it's sort of es- escalated or accelerated um, maybe the the path to, to success so, so far. You know, I think that the guys are able to, you know, see, oh, you know, we can win a game and, and we can be good. We are a good team um, rather than before where they're kind of just like, oh, we're a bad team. So, of course, we lost. Um, I think that that's the biggest thing right now. Now, obviously, things can change. They could go on to lose the, the rest mm-hmm. of the season. But. Um, from what we've seen, uh, they beat a really good Chargers team last week. You know, they they, they beat a, a Colts team that just beat the Chiefs. So, you know, it's just one of those things where you can tell that this is a little bit different. You know, I think that that's part of what Doug has brought in. Um, he's made a team that actually believes in themselves and believes in winning, and I think that's why we're seeing what we see. Mm-hmm. Have you heard anything from the team as far as, all right, Coach, you're going to play for your old team. Uh, we're going to win one for the Gipper. I mean, have they said anything like that, or is that in the media? Um, yeah. narrative up there yeah it, it, well you know not not necessarily a lot of players are talking about that but we, we asked trevor about it yesterday and, and and he mentioned you know hey we know how, how important this game will be for coach even if he's not going to say it you know obviously doug is downplaying it a pretty good deal um but but they know how important this is it's, it's a team that you know he brought to the Super Bowl, got them their first Super Bowl, and then was fired in, in 2020. Now, whether that was right or wrong, uh, that's up for debate or whatever. But, um, you know, I'm sure he feels a, a certain type of way in terms of, hey, you know, I want to prove that I, I, I can be a successful head coach in the NFL still. Uh, he took a year off, you know, to sort of reshape his, his mind and everything like that. I think that that's been um, a great thing about what Doug has done over the past year. Uh, so, you know, you can tell that the players are bought in and, and they believe in, in their head coach. So there's no doubt they're going to play um, as hard as possible for him and, and obviously for themselves. Demetrius, one of the things that, that stands out to me when I look at some of the numbers on the Jags so far is the fact that Trevor Lawrence has only been sacked twice. And yeah. I know they made some additions on the offensive line in the offseason. How much of that is that line's much better? And they could be both. Or the quarterback's getting the ball out quickly, et cetera. I mean, you know, that could be a big part of this game on Sunday. I think it's a combination. Um, you know, you have a Doug Peterson offense that relies on getting the ball out of their hands quickly. Um, we saw that with Carson Wentz back in the past. So we saw that with Nick Foles, obviously. Um, so, you know, it, it's part of, you know, Trevor getting better, you know, Trevor being in this offense. And then also the offensive line is playing that good. You know, uh, Jawan mm-hmm. Taylor, I know that, you know, Joey Bosa got hurt early in that game, but before that he was dominating him. And, and, and that's, you know, tough to mm-hmm. say. Not many players can say that they dominated Joey Bosa, but he really did. Um, and Khalil Mack, the same thing. They, they didn't really get to Trevor at all last week. Uh, the week before uh, with Ngakwe, they didn't get to him at all. I think that um, there's a combination of bringing in a new guy like Brandon Sheriff, who, you know, if he goes on to play how he can play over the next several years, he could be a, a Hall of Fame player. You know, he's, he's, he's that type of, of, of guard. Um, so, you know, bringing in a guy like him, bringing in Luke Fortner as as the as the center, Cam Robinson just got his new deal. He's playing well this year. I think that there's um, a combination of just the offensive lines playing very well and then also Trevor getting the ball out of his hands quickly and Doug sort of scheming it up. Demetrius, when we talk about Trevor, I don't think it can be stated enough that Doug Peterson did an incredible job of putting this umbrella around Trevor in terms of not not just Doug being a quarterback whisperer, but the fact that he brought in Press Taylor and Mike McCoy to groom him as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and that's sort of what Doug 
uh, said as soon as he was hired and as soon as he hired Mike and, and, and press, you know, those are guys that he wanted to surround Trevor with, you know, voices that he respected, voices that he trusts. Um, it wasn't just, you know, press coming along with them because that's that's his, that's his guy. It was more of he trusts him to uh, be able to take uh, Trevor and, and, and make him into the quarterback that he can be. Uh, he's, he's talked about it, too, where, you know, last year was basically like a, a, a rookie minus season for, for, for mm-hmm. Trevor. You know, he – he he would have been better off, and I've said this before, staying at Clemson, in my opinion, <laughs> rather than rather than going. But you know, it, it's it's true. You know, it's it's a it's a situation where um, Trevor just Trevor just didn't you know he he it didn't seem to be getting better, and I think we didn't really see that until maybe the last game of the season. So you know, to bring in a guy like Press Taylor, uh, Mike McCoy, who's been a head coach, and and then obviously Doug himself. Um, I think that that's been great, you know, a, a singular voice or, you know, as few voices as possible around him where uh, now he's able to excel and just sort of get back to football. Well, wow, Demetrius, uh, first of all, there's a book in that that season last year. I think you got to get all over that thing, man. I, I, I don't know. I, I would get on it quick. Someone else may jump on it. But um, the Jags defense here, you know, they're, they're giving up just 12.7 points per game. They're first against the rush, you know, the mm-hmm. against the pass, maybe not so much 21st, but they look like on that side of the ball, they're really, you know, coming together. And it looks like a lot of young talent, a lot of draft yes. picks that they hit on on the defensive side. Absolutely. You know, it starts with uh, Trayvon Walker, obviously, getting picked uh, number one overall. I know a lot of people looked at his stats in Georgia, said only, I think, nine sacks over three years or whatever it was. And, you know, they didn't see it. But the guy has come in and um, he hasn't necessarily dominated in the pass rushing department, but setting the edge, being that uh, – defensive end outside linebacker um, he's able to do that he's able to impact the, the the passer in a variety of ways I think that bringing in a guy like Devin Lloyd who's playing um, incredible this year you know he's he's one of the top linebackers in the league and, and definitely the top defensive rookie in the league right now so just um, having a couple of those guys come in and, and sort of reestablish their their front seven it, it's paid them dividends I think that um, them bringing in a guy like Foley Fadakasi on the defensive line has helped him in the, in the run department. Devon Hamilton, sort of un, unheralded, you know, nose guard type player that, you know, when, when you look at the game, you're not going to really notice him. But then he makes a play and you're like, oh, yeah, he's out there, you know, making plays against the run and also a, against the pass. So I think that they've done a good job of sort of curating this Mike Caldwell defense around the players that he likes. And um, I think that that's something that. Uh, you know, over the course of the season, we'll see exactly how it plays out. But uh, for right now, that front seven is probably one of the better ones in the NFL. You know, looking at offensively, you know what I'm saying? How did they see what Christian Kirk was when he was the, the, the third receiver, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, third receiver in, in, in Arizona? You know, how did they see that from him? You know, because he's definitely paying dividends. I didn't think he was worth $70 million, but evidently he is because he's balling right now. <laughs> Yeah, I mean you're 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 not alone. Everybody sort of kind of got on that train where it's like a overpaid, overpaid, overpaid. Um, but when you look at what he did against the the Cardinals, I think that's sort of what they saw, or what he did with the Cardinals. I think that's what he saw um, last season, where he played a majority of his time in the slot. He was able to be successful. It was his best season. I think that they saw, hey, we can tap into that. You know, play Kirk sort of in the slot in, in our offense and 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 you know get going. I think that that's sort of what they've done. Um, they've moved him all around. He'll he'll play out of the backfield sometimes. He'll play outside. He'll play in the slot. Um, and he's been successful. I think that it's just a credit to uh, Doug Peterson mainly um, to be able to sort of scheme a guy open. Um, maybe not like we've seen in Jacksonville in the past, and that's not just you know Urban, but it, you know Doug Marone, uh, Gus Bradley, all the way back. Um, so you know it's just a, a, a situation where they're taking a guy who might not be the the best receiver in the league. He's not. He's definitely not the tallest guy at all, um, or the biggest guy. But you know he's a guy that gets in there, is a very hard worker, which is something they value. Um, he's going to be one of the last guys off the field, things of that nature. And so I think that they've just been able to tap into that and, and, you know, they're making their investment worth it. They're getting the most out of it. In, in the I, game that we watch and know today uh, where people just drool over the wide receivers and the edge rushers, I'm still old school, Demetrius. My, my, my favorite positions are still running back and linebackers. Mm-hmm. And, and when I look at this kid, Devin Lloyd, mm-hmm. I've jokingly said he is the AFC version of Micah Parsons. Um, how surprised have you guys been in terms of how quickly he has adapted to the game at this level? 
yeah, it, it's it's been a big surprise only because in training camp, he didn't really have one. You know, he was out with a hamstring injury mm. all the way up until the Falcons week, and he played a half of football before starting, you know, week one against the commander. So um, it was kind of a surprise to see how, how much or how well he could play just with, you know, barely playing any football over the past couple months. Um, but the last two games have proven, you know, this is the guy that they drafted, you know, uh, coming out of Utah, uh, many thought of him, or at least, you know, from what I saw, many thought of him as a guy who could be a potential top 10 pick depending on, on, on how the cards fell. So when he fell all the way to 27, they obviously wanted to trade up and get him, but you're, you're right. You know, he's a guy who can, not only play the the off ball linebacker position, but he can play arm bar ball too as an edge rusher, as whatever they they want him to be. Just because of uh, he has the length, he has the size, he has the the speed to 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 play that. You know, obviously um, they haven't used him as a pass rusher as much as um, maybe he did at Utah so far, but they're going to do that. And I think that you know, honestly, the sky's the limit. Hey, you know, Demetri, you I, little- I'm. I'm curious. Uh, do you see the Eagles from from afar? We see them all the time. Uh, what your what your take is on just what they are, how good they are? Uh, you know what what this is going to look like Sunday against Jacksonville. Yeah, this is going to be their the, the Jaguars' biggest test of the season. You know, we thought last week was their next biggest test, but you know the the Chargers were kind of hurt and, and, and all that. So. Uh, but this week against the Eagles, you know, they're they're relatively healthy. They have guys on the outside, uh, Devontae Smith, obviously, with A.J. Brown. That's going to test the the Jaguar secondary, which to me is probably one of the um, weaker links, I guess you can say, of the defense just because of the the, the, the rest of the players are, are have proven to be so good, um, especially in the front seven. But, yeah, that, that's going to be a, a major test. And then, obviously, we talked about it a little bit before, but the offensive line against the Eagles defensive line, who, you know, this defensive line is probably um, one of the more seasoned, obviously, with uh, with Fletcher Cox and, 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 and all those guys. And, 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 you know, Jordan Davis as a rookie even, but still he's – probably one of the biggest uh, humans I- I've ever seen. So just um, <laughs> just uh, going up against this Jaguars offensive line, uh, Jaguars going up against that defensive line, I think that that's going to be such a big test um, for this team. And I think, you know, Doug, Doug sort of said it earlier that this is um, probably the best team that, that they're going to have played. You know, I know it's only week four, but it's true. Mm. You know, I, tell you, I hear you talking a lot of um, you hearing stuff and, you know, mm-hmm. and that's what they value, you know. Evidently, you know, you guys down there, and in, in, as far as the, uh, the media, have bought into what Doug is saying. Also, would that be an accurate assessment? Yeah, honestly, we have. And I, I think, I think it takes a while for us um, within the media to buy in, especially after going through last year, which we were just. We killed him when he first got to us. We killed him. We killed yeah. him when we first got to. We. <laughs> hey, they wanted him fired in. after the first year. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Yeah, I, I I guess it's I guess it's a little different. Maybe it's just be it's 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 refreshing to hear a guy you know stand up there and, and not just you know he actually knows the players' names. I I, I know it's a, a really low bar, but the, to contrast it to last year, it's it's really easy for us to buy in to to a guy who just looks like he knows what he's doing. And then when, when they win and it all kind of comes together, you know what he says actually reflects what's happening on the field. Uh, it's it's pretty easy to 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 buy into it. You know, I, I think that that's sort of what we've thought of as a media I don't, I don't speak for everybody obviously but um i think that for the most part we're all bought in and at least for right now in terms of at least this is heading in the right direction whether they get to the playoffs or not this year i don't think anybody said that the, the demetrius Mike how about will. injuries Who, who's banged up for the jags yeah shaq griffin uh he missed last week's game with a hip injury he was limited couple days this week we'll see today if he's going to go Doug seemed sort of optimistic but um, as you guys know he's very um, shy I guess about talking about injuries he doesn't really care to, to say anything he learned um, from so, Mandy he learned yes, from Mandy Reed yeah exactly so you know Zay Jones is, is, is another guy who got banged up yesterday in practice his ankle um, it was more precautionary from what they said and then um, we'll see today so you know they could be without uh, Shaq Griffin and Zay Jones or, or, you know, either way. But, you know, this – speaking of injuries, I kind of want to say the, the last couple weeks before Shaq missed the game, they hadn't had anybody on the injury report. And I, I've never seen that. Um, mm-hmm. I know you guys have been covering the NFL a, a lot longer than me, but just uh, not having injuries after week one, just completely empty sheet, um, it was surprising. So they, they've been pretty good in, in, in that department. The Mike Caldwell that I knew in Philadelphia well was very quiet, low-key, didn't say a whole lot unless he had to. 
the fact that he and, and we understand he's a Todd Bowles disciple. The fact that he has emerged as one of the top defensive coordinators in this game, from my perspective, I'm shocked. N- not that I didn't think he could do it, but that he he grasped it the way he did. Mm. How was how was he perceived down there? Yeah, I mean, I think it's exactly what you said. You know, he's you know he's not a, a raw raw guy. He's he's quiet. Um, doesn't say a whole lot, but you know the the performance that you see on the field kind of shows. Like he doesn't really have to say much at all. You know, they they've been able to. Um, I, I think what the one thing he's done very well is putting his players in positions to succeed, um, especially on the defensive line. They have a guy, um, Roy Robertson Harris, who's incredibly long. And, and, you know, last year they sort of didn't – it didn't seem like they knew exactly how to use him. Um, but this year it seems like they know the rotation. They know when he should and shouldn't be in and out of the game. Um, just the little things. I think that having a guy also who's played in the NFL at that coordinator position, played linebacker, um, especially with a young guy like Devin Lloyd on the team. I think that that sort of helped them develop him a little bit faster. Um, so I think he, he he's done a great job. You know, obviously um, they have still some time to go up against some of the top talents in, in, in the league, but um, so far, so good. What do you guys see? What are you guys seeing, um, you know, uh, Walker as, you know, Trayvon Walker and Josh Allen, they're, they're, they're saying they're linebackers, but would you say they're more yeah. so – especially against 11 personnel, one running back, one tight end, and the rest receivers, kind of a nickel front. Those guys are more so defensive ends. Uh, am I wrong for thinking that? Uh, kind of, but but not really. I, I, I get what you're saying. I, I think that, you know, they're mostly linebackers in, in the sense of they'll rush. Sometimes they'll even drop back. You know, they'll stand up in a two-point stance. You know, they'll, they'll do all those things. But, yeah, you know, on, on third downs, they'll have them playing down. They'll, they'll have guys like Dewan Smoot and, and Arden Key in there as well, basically just have four defensive ends rushing. Um, so, you know, they'll they'll mix it up. I think that uh, one thing about Mike Caldwell's defense that we were talking about, it's, it's very multiple. You know, he's going to have guys standing up sometimes. He's going to have guys uh, down in the three-point stance sometimes. Um, they'll have guys stunting that they have games. So, like, there, there's just a bunch they of They do that a lot, yeah. Yeah, they do yeah, that a lot. They, it's just it's just a bunch of different things. So, um, but yeah, Trayvon Walker he's he's done an excellent job in my opinion, at least in terms of setting the edge, playing that position well. And even last week he had a, a pass breakup, you know, defending a, a fullback out of the backfield. So he's a very versatile guy at two seventy. You don't really expect that, but you know he's able to do it. Mm-hmm. Dimitri, last one for me. Uh, weather has that played any kind of role this week? Have you guys been okay down there? Like, well, how have they handled practice? Will there be any mm-hmm. issues traveling here? Good question. Yeah, we we've you know in Jacksonville it, it hasn't it wasn't too bad. I think the, the weather's pretty much past now. Um, there's some light flickering, you know, power off in some areas, but mostly by the beaches. Luckily, the storm kind of like went a little bit away. But they changed up practice a bit yesterday. That was the worst day of the storm. Um, they sped it up pretty much. They got the players in, did all the meetings. It was like a um, half half day sort of crunch into one, um, and so there was no media availability and then today there was some virtual stuff um but they practiced this week you know it, it was kind of uncertain at first whether they would or wouldn't but it seems like everything's on schedule um they're gonna fly out saturday and that's sort of where we're at hey demetrius tell uh, tell dougie p and uh mike caldwell Derek gunn said hello would you because uh they were they're great people man uh just just good now. Just, I that's was... some selfish stuff ain't it yes yes, yes it is here. make it yes. about Derek. you know what yes, saying? yes it is stuff? you know why wonder. Because I've earned that right. I made those kind of yes, yes, they, 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 yes. Bro, I played I against you. them. I'm on the field against them for years. You know, I'm okay. I'm going back years. I was in Green Bay, bro. Do, do you have Doug Peterson's phone number? See, hey, hey. Do you have Mike Caldwell's phone number? I rest my case. Wow. <laughs> like, now, now you have to back the bus up over, over Barrett yes. now? What, like, how are you doing here? I don't care if you play, man. Hey, this is a relationship. Aren't you glad? Aren't you, you glad what goes down on there, here, bro? Demetrius? Do you, you see, see what I'm saying? You know, host on, host Demetrius, on, this cool, is every bro. day. This is every day oh, with God. us, Demetrius. It's He's sitting there right now going, what did I get you myself? You see what I Thank God. I got out of here built. because of this right here. Yeah, I'm not near <laughs> these That's why he got out of here. You know what I'm saying? That's why he got out of here because of this right here. You heard about the media up here. That's what That's what it is. Demetrius, don't listen to them. They're both on medication. Don't listen to either one of them. Not enough. Not enough, apparently. Uh, Demetrius, Appreciate listen, you, man, man uh, keep up the good work covering the Jags and, and you can follow Demetrius at Demetrius 82 on Twitter. Uh, you do a great job, man. Yeah. Thanks for a couple minutes. Thank it's you, man. Great speaking Appreciate it. I appreciate it. I appreciate you guys. Safe right. travels to you. Take care. Good insight there, man. That was, yeah, well, I, I love, yeah. 
you know, not that he's an enemy. I mean, I love going behind enemy lines and just kind of getting a vibe for, for what's going on down there. Yeah, this could be – this really – we'll get into the game in a second, guys, but it could be an interesting sort of like battle of the running game well, if, glad, if it's really sloppy track. Right, and that would that bode well for us. But I am so glad that um, that we see a different perspective on, on, on how we're viewing Jacksonville. Like he gave a – he gave a, all right, they're hoping to win. It seemed like everybody in our region like, oh, they might come in and beat us. It's, it, that's not the sense that I get from Jacksonville. I, I, I mean, uh, uh, from watching film, I see they're a very talented team. Yes, they are. They have some players in position, but they're just in position right now. They're not following through in every aspect of the game. Well, I think what we're doing too, Barrett, a little bit is, and Demetrius did a great job laying it out. We're going from – oh, my God, train wreck disaster to functional football team. You know what yeah. I mean? And I'm not trying to take anything away. Like, I, I I do think they're – Doug's turned them into a solid team, man, for sure. But it's such an extreme from what it was last year to what it is this year that maybe people are taking it a step yes. too far, perhaps. Yeah, that's you know. what I'm saying, yes. That, that right there. See, that's well, why you well, not only, credit. Yeah, but not only that, less than two weeks ago, we had six teams that were still undefeated in the NFL. Now we're down to one. Yeah. And I think that I think the constant we've seen throughout the course of this season is expect the unexpected. Yeah, it's been yeah. that way across the league the first totally. first three weeks of the season. I agree. You know, goes up must come down. Yeah, you know, yeah, on I'm paper, on paper, the Eagles have more talent, more depth than this Jacksonville team. Mm -hmm. But Jacksonville's front line talent on this their team is not only young, but they're very good. And yeah. they made some strategic moves. In terms of bringing free agents like Brandon Scherf, Christian Kirk, you know, so you know they turned it around a whole year sooner than a lot of people ever anticipated. So, yeah, I, I, God, I'm sorry, Doc. Even though it's a home game for the Eagles, we've said all week long this Jacksonville team is too young to understand they should be afraid or show utter respect to a team that's more veteran laden. They're going to yeah, come in here and, 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 and battle this team. You're right. I, I wasn't trying to take anything away from them. I, oh, I, just I know you weren't. I know. Yeah, I, because I do respect them. I, 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 and the other part that we that's just such an X factor is what's the emotional pitch going to be on Jacksonville side? Absolutely. Like the Eagles, the Eagles side, it's just sort of, hey, thanks, Doug, before the game. There's the video, right? Yeah. But with Doug, it's like, I want a Super Bowl, and I was out the door, what, three years later, whatever, yeah. whatever it was. Oh, yeah. You know, that, that's a lot, man. And I know yep. – you know, he may not have even hit them with that. That might be Saturday night speech. You know what I mean? You, so, you don't think this Jacksonville team is feeling itself right now after what they've done the last two games, beating the Colts? Yeah. And even though even though the Chargers were a depleted team, they still beat the a very good explosive Chargers team. Yeah. They've held, they held both teams at 10 points. You don't think those young kids are looking around the locker room, hey, we can win some ball games here. As, yep. as Demetrius said, they won four games over the last two years. Mm -hmm. they've already run one half the, the amount of games in three weeks as they won over the last two years. Yeah. You don't think this team is going to come in here and, and, and thinking we could be the team that takes down the last undefeated team in the NFL. They're thinking that way for sure. And, and like you just said, if it turns into a running game, it's supposed to rain this tonight, tomorrow, Sunday, right. Jacksonville got a pretty good running attack back there also. Yeah. Robinson yeah, and ETN are nothing yep. to sneeze okay. at. Yeah, and right, I'm so. not, and I'm still not too comfortable with this Eagles run defense. I'm gonna be straight up. All right, let's you know. let's do this. Let's let's jump into the matchups uh, with the game when we get back. Let's dig into that. We'll do the NFL stuff coming up at one o'clock. Hey, uh, Chris Long is going to be joining us in the two o'clock hour as well. So you don't want to go anywhere. This is the place to be on this Friday, getting you set for the Eagles and the Jaguars. Derek Gunn, Barrett Brooks, Rob Ellis. We are Sports Day, Jacob Sports YouTube Network. Let's talk Jim Murray. And principal financial group. All right, knowing who to trust with your finances, right? You work way too hard, way too hard to put your finances in the wrong hands. I got the right hands for you, and that's Jim Murray. He's got hands like A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith. He is going to do you right, whether it's retirement planning, 401K review, insurance review. If you have a small business, you need help with your employee benefits. That's another resource that Jim can assist you with. I know he's helped me with everything from IRAs to 401K rollovers, and I couldn't be happier. Give him a call, 610-996-4751, 610-996-4751. You can email him as well, Murray, M-U-R-R-A-Y dot Jim at principal.com. That's Murray dot Jim at principal.com. <laughs> 